Well, good morning. Yes, it's just past midnight, and I didn't even get quite two hours of sleep <laughs> last night. I've been laying awake for, for a while. I decided to get up and do the video, which is titled Reexamining What We've Been Taught. None of us like to think we believe lies about the way things are. Most do not welcome having their truisms challenged. Thinking outside the box is strongly discouraged in these circles. I humbly ask and even strongly suggest that we all take a closer look. What kind of world do we live in at this time? Is it one where people are free and encouraged to explore new ideas? Or is it a world where thinking for oneself can reap a whirlwind of trouble? Nowhere is this more evident than in politics and religion. Free thinkers are often accused of treason in the political world, and religious leaders label those who think outside the box of approved doctrines as heretics. The powers that have come to be don't want their apple cart overturned by anyone brave enough to challenge the status quo. Look at the world created by this attitude. Is it? a nice and loving world, perhaps to the insane. I, for one, am being forced by circumstances in my life to re-examine all that may have led to a condition that numbed me to higher truths. If everything was going reasonably well, I probably would not change anything. Perhaps that's human nature, distorted though it may be. However, we live at a time when, I believe, all of us will have to face the probability that our world is built on lies. Until we are ready to acknowledge that, we will not see the bigger picture. We are being given an opportunity to change the world. But first, we have to grow up enough to see where we are wrong and admit it. That was the blurb that I actually wrote for yesterday's video, but then I got the call from the attorney and, uh, and did another video ahead of this one, but I had already written this, this blurb prior to that call. And a time of re-examining is definitely needed, um, I think by everyone, but certainly by me in light of all the circumstances that I've had of losing my home, as I said in yesterday's video, uh, my attorney confirmed that, and so did the appeal court, that my home was taken in error, and all of my stuff was destroyed in error. You don't do that when, it, when the process of an appeal is going on. But nevertheless, what has happened has happened, and uh, the loss that I've suffered is a real loss of things that were of importance to me. And it's not so much the things as the artifacts of my of my life and ministry that were just wantonly disregarded and, and destroyed and forced. I was forced out of my home before I had a chance to uh, to get some of the important things. I just was not given enough time, even with the six people helping, I was not given enough time. To, uh, to remove everything that I would have liked to have removed. Any, in any case, uh, it is a time of re-examining. And I really think that we need to wake up and look at the world that we live in. We, we mustn't be afraid to look at everything, the politics and the spiritual beliefs. The religious beliefs have saddled us with the idea that we are somehow less than what God created us to be. God created us to be his own children. And as I've said in, uh, in a previous video recently, uh, Anastasia gave a living example of, of what it's like to not be brainwashed uh, as, a, as a young child into what to believe. She developed uh, a lifestyle where she was in touch with nature, and because she was in touch with nature, she knew God. Uh, 
she knew God differently than religious people know God. She remembered things that most of us have no recollection of because it's been programmed out of us by the by the culture in which we live. And we need to wake up and see that the culture in which we live is a manufactured culture. It's a culture that has been manipulated greatly to uh, exalt a certain group of people and or demons uh, and elevate these individual entities to a status of, of rulership uh, that enslaves everybody else. And if we don't recognize that, we won't change it. We have to first come to come home to the realization that this is the reality. And as I've said, they've distorted religion. Uh, and, and I'm looking at some of the things that I thought were true that I was taught and that I have been, that I've been teaching myself. And I, I have to be willing to let go of ideas and beliefs that don't, that don't serve me, and don't serve the highest good of humanity. I envision, as I have said many times, I envision a world that works for all of us. Well, that will never happen in a world where the lowest common denominator take leadership positions and people that are attorneys. Now, there was a reason, there was a reason that the United States, when it was founded, passed the original 13th Amendment not to allow attorneys to uh, hold any office publicly. They couldn't even be dog catchers. Uh, they were not seen as citizens of the United States, period. They were not. And they could not even be citizens because their allegiance was to a foreign entity, namely the King of England. And the Revolutionary War was fought to, to liberate us from the shackles of the King. And yet, within less, within, within a few decades already, the King was still exerting influence in the newly formed colonies called the United States of America. And, the rest, as they say, is history. We need to we need to learn these things. We need to know these things because as the United States has gone, it has taken down the whole world with it because we have been the ones that are the enforcers of the king's edict. And the king's edict being is the Rothschild. And primarily, it's the European monarchy uh, that has usurped the authority. Now, it's been going on for millennia, actually. But in recent centuries, in the last few centuries, uh, it has gotten way out of hand, and especially now in the, the end of the 20th century, the beginning of the 21st century, it is rampant that these malicious controllers have run roughshod over people's lives in in so many ways, and it and it goes back to the religious ideas, and it goes back to the political ideas. People say religion and politics don't mix. We've got to look at them as one thing. It is a control factor. It is a factor that keeps us in a box. Churches are taught that that if they want to maintain their tax exempt status of a 501c3 in government like in the United States, they cannot bring up subjects of politics, which is why I uh, was kicked out of, basically asked to leave the church that I had been faithful to for five years, because they were afraid that they were going to lose their tax-exempt status. And I see that in, in churches that I, I basically love what they, most of what they're teaching, but they don't go beyond uh, the basic teachings, and they get caught up in things that, that enslave their parishioners without the parishioners even knowing that they're enslaved. Anyway, I ask you to think on these things, and I do thank you.